Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is. Lately, I've been trying to start the podcast by looking dreamily off to the side. So, like, you're doing Welcome to the Pope on Film, and I'm like, oh, look at how tortured I am looking out into the. Oh, hello, podcast family. And I think it works for me. I think it works. I think it works. I think it works. But uh, I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. When I say worth a Google, that's a reference to Lego Batman. To yes. the Lego Batman movie. And I love that. So, Bunny. Um, first off, let's talk about the big news, the big, huge news. Uh, oh, shoot, my boob, we're in the camera. Oh, no, didn't mean that. I bought freaking tapes, Bunny. Uh-oh, why? I bought tapes because I've got a stereo. I bought it for $5 at a place called an occasional sale. It's here in town. It's the weirdest store in the world. It buys things on consignment. It, it it buys things from like consignment sales, like like an old person died. They have all of this stuff. They purchase it and they put it on sale for super cheap Estate at sale. this store. Yeah, it's only open like three days a month too. So like the whole town goes to this one weirdo store with a bunch of old things. They have probably the largest assortment of precious moments figurines and. Beanie Babies that I've ever seen in my life. Oh, God. Uh, so I bought a stereo for $5. It has a working cassette player, a working CD player. It's got a radio. It's got speakers. And, like, I made a mixtape. And so I went to a store, and I bought two tapes. I, I found a good store in Oklahoma City that had used stuff. So I got uh, Ani DeFranco's first album. I've really been getting into Ani DeFranco because I am a, a woman. I am a lesbian, so it, it's time for me to, to really embrace my roots. And I got a new cassette. Okay. I bought a new, unopened cassette that was recently made. Fucking Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, the soundtrack, on cassette. Wow. Fucking awesome. They had Guardians <laughs> 2 and Guardians 3 on cassette, but I got Guardians 2 because I just I just know these. You know? ELO and Fleetwood Mac and Parliament and Jay and the Americans. So I bought cassettes. I'm really fucking excited, happy that, you know, cassettes are still a thing. I had so many ca cassettes growing up that are all freaking gone. Yeah. They also had brand new on cassette Barbie the Barbie soundtrack. Really? And I thought about yeah, and I thought about buying that, but I'm like, no, no, I'll get that next time. So this is Jeff, the opening segment to this podcast, also known as the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment, brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today, or as the kids call it, huh? That's what the kids call it. Oh, the kids call it T-B-W-M-P-S-B-T-Y-B-R-S-L-D-T. No, we don't. No, that's what the kids call it on, in the streets. That's what the kids call it. So uh, I've got an exclusive story in Jeff that you won't hear anywhere else. I'm going to be blowing the lid off of something. This is huge. No, that's my soda. Put that down. But first, uh, the clock is ticking, Bunny. Yes. The clock is ticking on this podcast. Oh, uh, I thought right I now. thought you meant to our our eternal doom. Sorry. Well, that Sorry. that too. That too. Um, I just don't get. I just don't get the doomsday clock. And they're like, we've set it to twelve fifty nine, eleven fifty nine. And then we've set it to eleven fifty nine point 
in one second. Yeah. Like, like how much more room is there on the doomsday clock? You know, I feel like we've been really close to midnight for like decades now. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. So every time, every time the news mentions that the doomsday clock has been moved, and it's like, yeah, okay, I've I've already lived through this. Whatever. So uh, the clock is ticking on this podcast is what I'm talking about because it's the end of April right now, and this October we will be celebrating a full decade of. America's most unlistened to podcast, the Pope on Film. Yes. We will be celebrating a full decade of this show by pulling the plug on it in much the same way I pulled the plug on my good friend Orenthal James. Yes. We're good friends. I crashed on his couch for a while. Uh, most uh, of his real friends call him Orange Juice. Yeah. So, a uh, good guy. Good guy. And I'm sad, and I know I'm going to be in mourning about it. I, 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 I love this time that we spent together, and I love you, Bunny. But also, I'm kind of excited now. Like, there's a, there's a finish line to the show. Yeah. And that's kind of neat. And I've been thinking, like, oh, well, I was going to watch, we were going to watch this shitty movie next. I don't want to watch any shitty movies. I want to watch good stuff. I want to get excited. I want to watch movies I haven't seen before and good stuff. And so, it, you know, suddenly our podcast has a finish line, if that makes sense. Um, so there's just one big question. What are we going to do this summer? Oh, yeah. As I said, ah, shit, I guess we're watching all the Fast and the Furiouses, which we said that we would do for a very long time. But uh, I won our, our last themed summer. I believe this will be the ninth summer that we've done the theme summers. I'm not entirely sure. I'll, I'll have to go through my records to find out. But this is either the eighth or ninth summer where we've done a themed summer. and so. I want there to be choice. I want us to have some choices. So what I've done is one, two, three, four. I have five different possibilities for what we might do this summer. Okay. Five. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain them here. I'm going to uh, cut this bit out, put it like on Facebook and, and stuff. And I'm going to make a poll and I'm going to have people vote. And so whatever the results are for our next episode of the podcast, that's what we're doing this summer. All of these are great ideas, except for the Fast and the Furious. But whatever wins, that's what we're going to be doing. Okay. Okay. So let me explain to you what we will, what the options are for our final summer. Summer 2024, the big decision. So here it is. Uh, first off, the summer of live, which is something we've talked about doing for a while, where we watch all of the Saturday Night Live movies. Okay. So, uh, Blues Brothers, Wayne's World 1 and 2, Coneheads, It's Pat, Stuart Saves the Universe, whatever that fucking one was, Stuart Smalley. Uh, unfortunately, Blues Brothers 2000, A Night at the Roxbury, Superstar, which I never saw, The Ladies' Man, I remember there being one funny thing in that movie, and that was it, and McGruber. There are some, what's the word, ancillary? There yeah. are some ancillary SNL movies that we won't be doing, like, according to fanboys on message boards, uh, Office Space is a Saturday Night Live movie because the Mike Judge cartoon that Office Space was based on, excuse me, I believe you have my stapler, played once on SNL, and so people consider that to be an SNL movie. It's not. Another film that Wikipedia considers, Wikipedia considers, please don't destroy, the Treasure of Foggy Mountain to be a SNL movie. It's not. 
just because two SNL people, three SNL people are in a movie doesn't make it an SNL movie. Dewey Cox isn't an SNL movie, even though there's like six. It's a movie. It's a music biography about a, a, a musician named Dewey Cox, and he was amazing. Kind of like what? Yes, like Cox Internet, like Cox Cable. Yeah. So there's The Summer of Live. That's number one. Number two, The Summer of Almost. Okay. This is a real this is a real high concept theme for for a summer that I came up with. For example, here are some possibilities, but this isn't final. Uh okay. Uh today for our first film in the summer of almost, we will be watching the legendary film Ben-Hur from the 1950s starring Charlton Hess. Oh wait. I downloaded the wrong one. Funny, did you know they made a 2003 animated version of Ben-Hur for children? Oh, no. So, like, okay, today we're watching Twilight, the classic story of Bella, who is uh, in love with Edward and their, their horrid uh, romance. Oh, wait, I downloaded the wrong one. Did you know Paul Newman had a crime movie in the 90s called Twilight? We're watching that. And I've got a shit ton of them. Um, Child's Play, the 1972 okay. Sidney Lumet, Lumet drama. Frozen, the horror movie about those people stuck in a ski lift. Okay. Inside Out, did you know that in 2011, WWE Studios made a shitty PG-13 action comedy starring Triple H, also called Inside Out, and uh, The Avengers, the shitty one with Uma Thurman. Uh -huh. So like the summer of almost. And so every, every episode, we think we're going to watch a movie. Oh, we're watching Gladiator, the classic Ridley Scott film. Are you not entertained? Ah, oh, shit. It's the boxing one from the 80s. Yeah. It's the Cuba Gooding Jr. film. Ah, oh, shit. Today we're watching Christine, uh, Stephen King's classic book about... Oh, wait. We're watching the 2016 drama Christine. So, The Summer of Almost. That's our second Yeah, option. that one. that one I think is a little rough. I like the concept. I think the yeah, execution like would be painful. Today, we'll be watching Crash, the uh, Oscar award-winning film about... Oh, no, wait. We're watching Crash, the uh, film where uh, James Spader has sex with a... Oh, no, wait. We're watching the 1976 horror film Crash by Charles Band. I've got a bunch. I've got a wow. shit ton. Wow, okay. I didn't know about I've that got a one. Yeah. I've I've got like a shit ton, but yeah, there's a Ben Hur animated film for kids. It, it, I haven't seen it, but it's shitty. So then number three, the summer of Tim Curry. Now he's still alive, which I think is rude for us in this podcast. Yeah, I think that you know, if Tim Curry really loved us, then he would make it so that we can do a summer tribute to him, but uh, he's still alive. So this is my concept for the summer of Tim Curry. Every episode, we pretend like he just died and we give people the reason why he's dead. Okay. And it's a different reason every week. I like that idea. Today, we will be watching Congo. Featuring Tim Curry, who sadly um, died in a, a choking on a marshmallow. You know, like every episode, we come up with a different reason why Tim Curry died. We, but we, we can... as an aside, as a bit of a tangent here, though, we should compile a list of people that that are probably gonna die before this show is over. Like, Roger Corman is hanging on by a fucking thread. How much Roger longer can Corman. that bitch have? 
Roger Corman. Yeah, but I thought that the summer of Tim Curry would be good because, like, we can watch Legend, we can watch It, we can watch fucking Muppet Treasure Island, Rocky Horror Picture Show again. But then he's been in so many things. We could watch uh, Nickelodeon's The Wild Thornberries, the movie. We could watch Burke and Hare. He was in a 2013 film called Ginger Clown. Okay. I don't know what it's about. His first, we can watch Pass the Ammo from 1988. Do you remember that film? Because I sure as shit do. Yeah. We can watch 1978's The Shout. Do you remember that? No. I don't. Yeah, because he's been in fucking everything. We would have the- to. We would have to watch his version of The Addams Family. Oh yeah, the third one. Yeah, whatever the third one was. Yeah, we we would have to see his Gomez. Yeah, so that's the third one. So there's the Summer of Life, the Summer of Almost, the Summer of Tim Curry, the Summer of Family, where we watch all of the fucking Fast and the Furious. This is, is that's fine. I did watch one of them, the spinoff Hobbs and Shaw, and I found it to be mostly harmless. Uh, and then the fifth idea, which I'm really excited about, the, the idea of the summer of Taylor Swift. Now, let me explain this. You have no idea what I'm saying, Eleanor. Let me explain it. I'm not watching Cats again. No, 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 not I'm at not all. I'm not watching unless... fucking Cats again. I'm not watching Cats again. Unless you want to. So hear me out. The summer of Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift lost the rights to, like, her first, I don't know, three, four, five albums. She completely lost the rights to them. So what she did was she re-recorded them with, you know, and then she made it a bit new. She made the songs better. And so that's why if you go on Spotify or something, then here's this Taylor Swift song. And then here's that same Taylor Swift song. But at the end, it says in parentheses, Taylor's version. So here's the summer of Taylor Swift. We go back and find our favorite weirdest movies we've ever done. You and I each take turns picking a movie. Okay. And then we do episode 480. Uh, Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. And then in parentheses, Taylor's version. And not only do we cover that (sighs) movie again, but we cover the episode that that movie was originally covered in. Oh. So, like, that's so intriguing. like the first. Yeah, so the first one that I would pick, easy, no problem. No, not that. No. The one that I would pick is uh, the first movie we saw, The Snow Creature. And then after that, you could pick a movie, and it could be any movie you wanted that we have already done live. Uh. No what are some of the movies first? you like? Uh, the Oogie Loves, Swept Away, yeah. Battlefield Earth. There are so many films that oh, you Oh, God, watch. yeah. Uh, fucking Begotten. Do you remember that? Begotten, yes. Fucking Skinamarink, the movie that doesn't exist. Out of all the movies that exist, that movie exists the least. Yeah. That's the best review that I can give for uh, the movie Skinamarink. It's a movie where nothing happens, but it's a movie where nothing happens that will stay in your mind for, like, weeks. Yeah. So those are my five ideas. The Summer of Live, the Summer of Almost, the Summer of Tim Curry, the Summer of Taylor Swift, and fucking the Summer of Fan. Those are my ideas. I'm going to be doing a poll that will be going out in the next couple of days, and I'm going to leave it up for like a week, week and a half. Whoever, Whatever wins, that's what we're doing this summer. Okay. Very excited about this. I think that either one would be fun. You know, watching Tim Curry movies, that'd be fun. Uh, watching movies with a slightly different title, that would be fun, would be shit. Who knows? That's the exciting part. Saturday Night Live, I really don't want to do that because most of those movies are shit, but I'd be willing to because it was something that we said we would do. And then the idea of Taylor's, a summer of Taylor Swift, I like that idea. We can go back and watch some 
films that we like. And, uh, you know, we can pick whatever we want. Cats, Hubie's Halloween. Oh, no, no, no. Sandy Wexler. Oh. Fuck, that was it. Fucking Sandy Wexler. Shit. You wanted to fucking kill me after that. <laughs> that movie sucks. Okay. So, in the next couple of days, we will be posting the poll for you, the audience, to decide what theme we go for this summer. With that out of the way, Bunny. Yes. This podcast is about to become fucking historic. Are you ready, Bunny? I am ready. Okay. And I hope other people are ready as well. I know that I have said this before, that I have hyped up and wildly oversold shit. Yes. That wasn't exciting. But I, I mean it when I say this. I honestly, sincerely, seriously, literally mean it when I say that this opening, this Jeff, this Betty White Memorial podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends Download today, episode 476, kicking off Jeff, we will be kicking off the opening with something that is both historic and a Pope on Film exclusive. A worldwide exclusive. Yes, it is. This is huge. This is massive. This is historic. This is big. It is huge. I'm having you come in here as a guest, and you're trying to undersell this. Because you're not the first person to notice that you would cover this. What my wife is trying to say is, this is huge news. That will no doubt rock the world. Are you ready, Bunny? I, I I don't think there is a way to be ready for this. Good point. That's a good point. Well, get ready to stop the presses, America. Bunny, do you like Chris Bunny. Bunny, yes. do you like Triscuits? Do I like what? Triscuits. Like triscuits. Triscuits are good. Okay. 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 Well, hold on, hold on. I'm still selling a little bit. I've I've got like a few lines left. Sure. Okay. Well, hold on. Um, but this is not my story to tell, which is why I am extremely happy to be bringing on to the Pope on Film podcast a very special guest. She is a writer, an activist. Video gamer, mom, a woman with a phenomenal butt, my wife. Round of applause, please, for Tasha. Round of applause. Round of, none of the kids are here. Applause, but no, they're, all they're all gone. Okay, so take it away, Natasha. First of all, uh, this is not brand new news. This is just something I... I came across this and huge. wanted to share because I found it absolutely fascinating. And it was like, I don't know, one in the morning I was high and it was so funny to me. Okay. <laughs> so, so, uh, Trisk, I'm going to give credit where credit is due to at Sage Boggs on Twitter. I will refuse to call it whatever the fuck they wanted to rename it. Uh, so he was at a party several years ago. He posted this in 2020, by the way, and spotted a box of Triscuits and asked about uh, the word Triscuit and what it means. Clearly, it's based on the word biscuit, right? Has to be. And then there's the word try. What does try mean, Bunny? Uh, well, 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 in this case, this is more like three, T-R-I. Yeah. 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 So you think try biscuit. So you think there's like three specific ingredients or something, right? So that's also the consensus that the people of the party came to. Maybe three layers, three ingredients, who knew? And they Googled it, but Google wasn't very helpful. Not very helpful these days anyways. All they want to do is sell you shit. So um, they didn't have an official answer. And they went straight to the source. They emailed Nabisco. And the response they got uh, he said, shook them to the core. Okay. So, it, 
This is their response from Nabisco. Thank you for your interest in our Triscuit crackers. No business records survive, which specifically explains the origins or inspiration for the name Triscuit. But we do know the name was chosen as a fun div derviate. Div deviation? That, that's good. Derivation? Derivation. Derivation. Sure. The word biscuit. The try does not mean three. If you haven't done so already, please add our site to your favorites and visit us again. So the try doesn't know, mean three, but no business records survive. So how do they know that? Um, what happened at the Triscuit factory is the big question. The people who make Triscuits don't know why Triscuits are named Triscuits. Yeah. So, and what it, what happened at the Triscuit factory? Um, I, I would be interested if there was a jingle originally for triscuits i think that might give us a, a little more insight the the jingle like it, like if it was, was trying to go along with like something like a tisket a tasket basket whatever that song was something like that see that's what i was thinking where, that where, was my whole thought process was yeah. a tisket a tasket like triscuits yeah the, the original jingle for it was Try some Triscuits. We know why they're called that. But fuck you. If you ever time. wanted to eat wicker, but just didn't have the time. <laughs> right? Yeah. Triscuit, Triscuit is for um, you. So it, he, he says, so no business records survive. What the hell happened to the Triscuit factory? Did the building explode? Did someone run out of the doors and yell? It doesn't mean three right before perishing in a giant blaze. Uh, so they did some sleuthing online and I do have these very same advertisements and I would love for them to be posted with the whatever wrap up that you've got going on. Um, but in the advertisement, it shows a waterfall. Click it and put it up and that should be good. 10 minute Ten warning. Minute warning. Oh. Uh -huh. They're all on my computer. I thought I put them here. Oh, are these just, Screenshots? No, no, no. I have the actual ads, but they are on my computer. I thought I put them oh, on my phone. Okay. But they're not on my phone. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, so let me pull it up what I can. How's that? So. Anyways, um, so the advertisement will roll and it'll be there. I'm filming. I'm filming. What do you want me to do with oh my it? Gosh. Okay. Okay. Do the... we get a 10 minute warning here, love? I know. What are oh, we doing? Crap. What are we know. doing? Huh? 10 minute warning. 10 minute. Here. Do this. Found it. Nope. Still not doing it. Motherfucker. <laughs> I hate Twitter. This is Twitter sucks ass. I want you all to know that. Anyways. Don't so... you mean X? No, it's Twitter. It will always be Twitter. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that was the right. Anyways, so I can't click this right now. Maybe I can make it bigger. Yes, I can. See that beautiful, see that beautiful Niagara Falls? Yes. Right there with the Triscuits and all the electricity and the beautiful, beautiful scenery. Okay. So it says, Baked by Electricity, the natural food company at Ni Niagara Falls. So in the early 1900s, Triscuit was run out of Niagara Falls, and their big selling point was being baked by electricity. They were the only food on the market prepared by this 1903 process. Look at the light. He says, look at the lightning bolt. Um, and so and that's when it clicked for him. Electricity biscuit. Okay. Electricity biscuit. So it's a Triscuit means electricity biscuit. It's a Trisk biscuit. Okay. Instead of electricity biscuit. Uh, and so then he said that we did it, folks, because Triscuit responded. We had to go all the way up the ladder, but we can confirm. So Triscuit is short or a combination of electricity biscuit because it was the only thing cracker that was cooked by electricity at the time. So now if you, a 1903 process, bunny. So now so if you really want to be a hipster and you're at the supermarket, oh, look electricity biscuits like i said obviously i'm the first person to know this several when, when this guy like did all this digging 
uh, some real Jeff level digging. Okay, um, but this you know, opens Jeff up Jeff. so many uh-huh. more questions. So many more. What happened? Because he doesn't explain that in the post. I want to know what happened to the. I mean, what, what, I mean, I mean. So, so. I guess we can assume they are no longer baking Triscuits with electricity, or they well, will remember I'm... why it was named fucking Triscuit. Maybe, or maybe not. I don't know. It was a new process then, so, but why wouldn't, you'd have to change but, the But uh, are they continuing the process now? Or are they you know, still cooking Triscuits with electricity? Somebody get a hold of this guy. And tell him that we need him to ask Nabisco if they still use electricity. Because he's already got a relationship. Ding dongs are originally a candy Ding. called dings. And they were originally made, um, they would stir the batter with their penises, which is why they're called ding dong. Uh huh. I got more. And, and, and if they I stopped cooking them with electricity, when and why? Like, did just somebody walk into the factory one morning and be like, "Well, my what the question, fuck are we doing?" <laughs> my question is, we have an oven. Was, what happened to the factory, and was whatever happened related directly to the electricity? Because if it was, that would explain why. If they changed the process, they changed it. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, so the electricity Electricity they used to make triscuits caused the factory to burn down, and then they stopped using. And then they stopped using electricity. Yeah. Okay. That, that, I mean, you know, makes sense in my head. Yeah, yeah, makes perfect sense. Okay. So, so to be so, clear, are we this also saying now officially calls it electricity biscuits? Are okay. we also saying that <clears throat> triscuits predate toast? No, because you can toast bread with fire. Fire. So, like, like, were we cooking triscuits first, and then we were like, "Hey, no." Well, this I mean, would be great you for know, toast. Maybe, maybe somebody was like, "I could take this uh, technology with this brand new electricity thing in 1903 and slap it into a small box." shove some bread in it. I am way too sober for this conversation you two are having. You get on our level. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah. Where's the where's the bag? <laughs> hey, look at this bitch. She's over here sober. Yeah. <laughs> but Triscuits. Who knew? Well this guy not did. even the makers of Triscuits knew. Yeah, yeah. No. Crazy. No. They had to that, call that John was fascinating. Triscuits. That was like a yeah. shaft. It was. It was a. It was a nap. <laughs> nap. It was a nap. It was a nap. Nap. Yeah. Another H sign. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> so it was a nap. Yeah. It was a I don't nap. believe that letter should be silent. I believe all letters matter. Yeah. Why are we silencing letters? Yes, I- for those images of the advertisements, I pulled up an advertisement for Lucky Strikes. And it was such a fat shaming advertisement. It was like, next time you're craving, reach for a Lucky uh-huh. Strike. And it shows an image of a like a, a slightly see-through fat man. And then it shows the same guy, but slimmer. And his hair is different and everything. Yeah. And he's like running and he's all slender. And yeah, and then at the bottom, it has an asterisk. It says, we are not saying that Lucky Strikes will remove flesh, reduce flesh. We're saying grab a Lucky Strike next time you have a craving. Hey, I was like, cigarettes as appetite suppressants. Wow. Why are they they discussing how, like, they're all focused on women, women body issues. Look at you motherfuckers in the smoking industry, shaming men and fat shaming Mm -hmm. their bodies. That's so fucked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's been Jeff and historic Jeff. I want to thank our guest, Tasha, for uh, joining us in this 
very special Betty White Memorial podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today. Download today. Uh, did you learn, Bunny? I, 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 learned. I learned. I did. I, I yeah. feel. I feel a lot more educated. I feel a lot more uh, aware of my surroundings. Yes. I was originally going to start the podcast discussing uh, products that have different names in different countries. Oh, yeah, which is so frustrating, Bunny. Yeah. yeah. So frustrating. Smarties are called rockets in Canada. You know what Three Musketeers are called? In what? what England. England? No. Milky Way? Yeah. Milky Way? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, wait until well, next time. Well, then what do they call Milk a Milky Way? Mars. They call it a Mars bar. They call her Royale with cheese. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all fucked up. Yeah. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you. I love you very much. Okay. So, uh, we are going to wrap this up. We are going to take a break. And then after this, we're going to be diving into this movie. We're going to be talking about, uh, the menu, the fetishization of uh, a-hole chefs. We're going to be talking about why Tony Danza is a dumbass. Uh, it, it's going to be uh, J.K. Rowling. It's going to be very heated. But first, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. All right. We will be right back with more of the Pope on Film after this. Do 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 do. Hey, I didn't get cut off this time. Do 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 do. Skitty papa do wow and break. 